So, you want to get your ass into jazz again, because I bet, or I guess that you've seen my other video, uh, the first one where you got your ass into jazz. If not, go back and, and check that out. You can check this out too, It's it's uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, the thing is, this is records that I think that all, everyone who, who gets into collecting jazz on vinyl should own. Yes, should own. Uh, not only check out, they should own these records. So yeah, if you haven't sus subscribed, please do. Uh, that would be awesome. I'm gonna go through some records that I think is, I mean, they're top-notch, five-star records, uh, easy to get your hands on in different pressings. It's just like the starting point, and you should own these. If you go into and, and dip your toe into jazz like a beginner, uh, want to build a, a jazz uh, vinyl collection, these are the records to, to go for, in my, in my opinion. So without further ado, cue intro. If you have any comments, please write them down. If there's something I missed in my video, um, write that down and we can have a discussion going. Maybe the viewers can go down in the comment section and see if, if there's something else that you are, are uh, recommending. So why not start at the birth of the classic records? I don't know. I don't know the birth. What am I talking about? 1959. Um, there's a documentary on this and these records. There were four records that was released in 1959 and they are considered as the classics of all classics. And the first video I showed, um, Kind of Blue with Miles Davis. This time I'm gonna recommend this. This is Mingus Aum by Charles Mingus, the bass player on Columbia Records. This is a Swedish Samsung pressing. Um, so the original press came to Sweden and they glued a Samsung um, record store on it. But underneath this is a 6i Columbia. This is a great record. Like it's so easy to get into. Uh, if you, heard, you have heard this a million times. I bet you have. And it's, it's a core record for everyone who's getting into jazz. Get this, Charles Mungus album, 1959. Also 1959 was Dave Brubeck's year, um, and this is even more known. I think that this is next to Kind of Blue, this is the most sold jazz records uh, of all time. The Dave Brubeck Quartet uh, with Time Out Take 5 and Blue Rondo a la Turk featuring. Uh, Columbia Records once again, Dave Brubeck, fantastic piano player. In my opinion there's more interesting piano players, but if you're going into jazz, it's easy to, to really grasp what he's trying to do here. A uh, great composer also. Uh, a classic, classic. And once again, you have heard these a million times without even knowing that this was Dave Brubeck. So uh, check this out. You need this in your collection. And the last one to like sum up 1959, the last recommendation from that year, I think at least, is this one. And now we get into the little more freer sort of part of, of jazz. But I think that it's not too much to ask uh, of you to, to go ahead and listen to the entire piece. This is Ornette Coleman's The Shape of Jazz to Come. I mean, the title is even more known than I think the artist. Great, great title. On Atlantic, this is a 1971 reissue. Uh, I don't have a, a first press of this. I wish I had. This is pressed in, and all of these are pressed in so many different uh, copies. So uh, you can find this at Walmart. <laughs> I, I think so anyway. Classic record. Uh, you go a little bit deeper into the jazz, but still 1959. And you can, I mean, if you compare it to the other three, Let's say kind of blue also here. The, the, the rule book of jazz was sort of rewritten starting here. And Lou Reed has said that there, there weren't a day, because he's it, dead now, but there weren't a day that went by that he didn't um, hum uh, the intro to, uh, to uh, Lonely Woman, the first track. Moving on. So I recommended Miles kind of blue in the last video. Um, <laughs> feels like this is a promo video for kind of blue it isn't it's it's get your jazz get your jazz into ass if you want to keep on exploring it's a little bit dark here but if you want to keep on exploring miles i would go for in a silent way after this 
um, if I'm not mistaken, this is from 1969, 68, 69, somewhere along that line. And this is where Miles went head first into the sort of electric period where he wanted to explore where the limit between or the, the boundaries between jazz and rock uh, began and, and ended. Um, he was highly influenced by Jimi Hendrix and Slime Family Stone at this time. And after this, it culminated in Beaches Brew, which could be on this list. But I think that this is a better start because this is a little bit more smoother into that sort of electric period. If you dig this, then you are, it's like open field. There's so many great, great cheap uh, records, original pressings that you can go in any store to get with Weather Report and, and uh, Miles' other um, uh, electric stuff. A heap, heap of stuff. This really blew the market up in uh, the 70s. <clears throat> I think that this record, the next one, is... It, 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 it's, it's from the... the um, from the record label ECM. A little bit of a hit and miss label, uh, if you ask me, but this is a masterpiece. 1975 and solo on piano, two LP set. And you have to ask yourself, how in the hell can we keep our interest for two LPs, just a solo piece of, of, uh, of a record? But this is so, so beautiful and well played. It's insane. Keith Jarrett, the Curl Köln concert. I read somewhere that he came onto stage hang over like a animal but it may be sick also but then again where uh, does one start and the other end uh, sick hung over what the hell but he played like an animal as I said and, and um, the crowd went Woo we have we have the proof here and this is a core record get this cheap heat so playing with miles he wanted to to um, try his wings <laughs> he had tried his wings before this also but i think that this is the most known and easy access accessible record by herbie hancock this is um, headhunters 1973 this has also been issued in so many times different different pressings and stuff like that this is funky jazz fusion funky jazz fusion a lot of bass a lot of uh, sly the family stone as i said uh, hi highly influenced these guys to to uh, keep pushing jazz forward um, and and the the old guard did not like and not everyone but the in general the good the old guard of jazz uh, players didn't like what they were hearing and what like the market was going towards with the electric uh, instruments but what we have is iconic, iconic records um, that still today sells like butter. Okay, so the next one is 1964 and it's a no-brainer in my opinion. This is Lee Morgan's The Signwinder on Blue Note Records. This is a classic series that Blue Note put out 2020. Sounds great. I don't know if it's in print. Depends on when you look at this video but but uh, um, there are a few copies out there that sounds great different pressings so just do the research if you're into that if you just want the vinyl you can buy it anywhere this is uh once again an iconic iconic record with joe henderson barry harris uh, bob crenshaw and billy higgins on drums you should get into lee morgan fantastic trumpet player and there's a documentary um that you can check out, made by a Swedish guy actually. He also did one about Albert Eiler that no one knows. Really good, but but yeah, uh, Lee Morgan. I, I, I call him Morgan, I think it's called. Uh, don't know what it's called, but I've seen it like four or five times. Uh, that's great. Uh, so dive into the Morgan sort of story. It's a bunch to, to get there. There's a handful, of Lear, if, a handful of Lee Morgan records that you could buy as your first sort of Lee Morgan start collection. Blah. I chose the, the Signwinder. You could take, uh, you could take uh, Rump Roller or uh, In Search for New Land. Doesn't matter. Fantastic records. And just continuing with Blue Note records. And in my opinion, it doesn't matter which Blue Note records you put on the turntable. There's going to be something interesting. 
music wise production wise it's just highest quality all the way through and same with this the amazing Bud powell this is volume one with Fats Navarro, Sonny Rollins, Ray ha Roy Haynes and uh, Max Roach on drums. Want to see if there's a 1951 49 53. This is a compilation of 10 inch records if I'm not mistaken. And there's also a volume two. But they released this as an LP. Uh, I think this is Bud Powell's most known sort of records with this iconic uh, cover. But Bud Powell, great, besides um, Thronus Monk, maybe the most uh, uh, interesting piano player we have had um, in, in the world. Uh, Bud Powell, fantastic. Also, the story behind uh, Bud Powell is interesting and tragic, as with many, many uh, jazz musicians, unfortunately. Okay, so finally, a uh, woman. This is uh, Billie Holiday's Lady in, in Satin. It's a 70s reissue, I think, of this iconic vocal jazz. I mean, <laughs> if you don't like vocal jazz, and I'm one of them, you should check this out because it's uh, you can hear her, all the anxiety, all the world's problems is there in her voice. And she is, if you have your history, uh, <clears throat> researched about Billie Holiday she lived a very very tragic life so and you can hear that in the music and in her voice insane insane so good this is in my opinion also a core record it's been issued in so many different pressings and and reincarnations I don't know half uh, of it this is my copy it's on debut I think it's one of the, the first ones that they put out. It's Jazz at the Massey Hall. And I actually have this filed under Charlie Parker. Even if he was on the contract with... Riverside? No? Fuck it. Uh, so he's, he's penned uh, Charlie Shan on this one. But I still file it under Charlie Parker because it feels like a Charlie Parker record. But you also have Dizzy Gillespie, Bud Powell, Max Roach and Charles Mingus on this insane and the record recording quality isn't the best definitely not i think that it was uh charles mingus that did the recording and he had to go in and overdub his own bass because the bass was just gone on the on the uh, recording but what we get is the most maybe historical jazz live concert ever another uh, woman in jazz that should be talked about every day is Alice Coltrane. John Coltrane's uh, second wife, I think, of the Nima. Nima. I mean, she, she managed to keep the household intact while John Coltrane was taking over the world, but at the same time playing the harp, playing the piano, writing music, and after his, I think before his death, but also after his death, she has um, taking care of the Coltrane legacy and also released some of the best albums on um, the Impulse label that you can find. Uh, picking up the the, um, the personnel that Coltrane uh, sadly left behind. Pharaoh Sanders, Charlie Hayden, uh, Sissel McBee, Rashid Ali. And this uh, journey into Sachindananda exactly like that that's exactly how you pronounce it uh, it's maybe the most known Alice Coltrane record and maybe the best in my opinion but it's 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 uh there's so many great great Alice Coltrane I wish I had more Alice Coltrane this is maybe have three or four Alice Coltrane going back to a little bit more of the st standard jazz shit uh, Art Blake in the Jazz Mess just the big beat 1960 1960 Playing on this uh, is Lee Morgan that we talked about earlier, Wayne Shorter, a very, very young Wayne Shorter. Bobby Timmons, Jimmy Merritt and Blake on drums. This is the first press. It's been issued so many times, countless, countless times. You can get this really easy uh, on vinyl. And the last one that I'm going to show you today that I highly recommend is a new jazz uh, album with Kenny Dorham called A Quiet Kenny. This is also released in a bunch of different uh, pressings. Not as many as mon many of the Blue Note records that I showed you, but, but 
I think it's out there for you to buy. This is the Craft Repress that they did uh, for Record Store Day, uh, limited to 2,500 copies. Sadly, it's sold out like that. And I don't know if it's coming back in print. Sounds fantastic. First press is you have to mortgage your house to get the first press. But as I said, there's a bunch of different pressings that you can get on this. Check it out. It's a quartet. You have uh, Kenny Doran on trumpet. Great, great trumpet player. Uh, Tony, Tommy Flanagan on piano. Uh, Paul Chambers on bass. And Arthur Taylor on uh, drums. A classic, classic. And once again, essential. Essential jazz record. And there you go. That's the records I'm going to show you today to get yourself into jazz. Your ass into jazz again. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And please comment also if you have suggestions on records to get your ass into jazz, really. Until my next video, have a great day. Bye.